Fifty years that company was acquired by uh, Solium, which was then acquired by Morgan Stanley a year later. My co-founder, Ernie Reimer, is the director of sports science at the University of Utah. He's a very uh, talented, well-respected professionally in the industry. He's best known probably for his extremely sophisticated and powerful spreadsheets that he's built to manage and deliver strength and conditioning in high performance environments. He frequently speaks at conferences and, and uh, is highly credentialed and uh, sought after for, for his skills. So <clears throat> the problem that strength and conditioning professionals face is they need to provide individualized training to many athletes at once, but this is a very hard thing to do. You know, the goal of the strength and conditioning professional is to provide the correct amount of stimulus that will induce the adaptations in the athletes and enable them to perform and excel at their sport or event. But the attention to detail required to bring about these adaptations at an individual level is, is extremely high, especially if you want to compete at the highest levels, um, you know, pro international Olympics. And so uh, <clears throat> coaches have, they spend a ton of time building out their programs and then making individualized adjustments to account for the needs of each individual athlete. Uh, no, no coaches are notoriously overworked and underpaid, spend 60 plus hours a week in, co in training on the floor, in meetings with staff and in Excel and Word, building out their programs and trying to get them into the hands of their athletes. So our solution is to build strength and conditioning software that helps coaches deliver the individualized training needed at a large scale. And we want to address four major pain points. Number one, athlete management, basically being able to get the data you need about your athletes in order to track how they're performing and provide individualized prescriptions. Number two is program design. Basically the ability to quickly and efficiently design scientifically sound programs that will bring about the desired adaptations in your athletes. Number three is program delivery. Basically just getting the right prescriptions in the right hands at the right times. Uh, a lot of this is, is logistics. And number four is, is analytics. Uh, basically being able to analyze the cause and effect relationship between your training prescriptions and your training outcomes. To date, we've launched with a number of universities and sporting institutions and across the board, we've had just amazing feedback and really, really positive uh, testimonials from, from our beta users. The coaches really enjoy using the software. They find it very intuitive. It saves them a ton of time and it keeps them out of Excel pretty much completely. They have no need for spreadsheets using our software. The athletes pretty much universally uh, enjoy using the app as well on their end, being able to record what they're doing and uh, report back to their coaches. So a few, a few quick highlights of the product. Uh, the planning tool is one of the most useful tools that the coaches have, have uh, given us feedback about. It enables them to organize and plan their activities in a very logical and efficient manner and build a comprehensive plan for their athletes. Our, planning, our, our program builder tool is extremely intuitive and efficient. We incorporate some of the conveniences of Excel and inject it with uh, very powerful features that are specific to the coach's use case and makes it easy for them to build out these very scientifically driven, uh, logical, progressive programs. The calendar is a very intuitive, familiar interface to them as well. It helps them manage their sessions, their training sessions on a day-to-day -day basis and execute really efficiently. And lastly, we've put a lot of work into building a great experience where the rubber meets the road, which is coaches managing their workouts on the floor and athletes consuming their workouts and recording what they're doing uh, in, in the app. So we participate, we, we compete in what would be considered the uh, on-field on uh, sports analytics industry. 
And it could generally be thought of in four different quadrants, athlete management, devices, strength and conditioning, and sports medicine. Currently, these, these four disciplines are, are kind of disjointed. Um, athlete management systems basically take in data from the devices and some of the strength and conditioning software and try to present it in a useful manner to coaches. Sports medicine is kind of there in their own little silo, uh, managing electronic medical records, building their rehab plans and so forth. FIT currently sits squarely in the strength and conditioning quadrant, but our long-term vision is to be able to build a platform that brings together all these different quadrants and enables coaches and sports medicine professionals to provide a cohesive, holistic program for their athletes. We've already made really good progress um, between the silos of strength and conditioning and sports medicine. We've enabled uh, sports medicine professionals to simultaneously plan and build their rehab uh, programs alongside the strength and conditioning programs. And the strength coaches can see what the, what the sports med people are doing and vice versa. And they can be on the same page and work together a lot better. So we see a really good opportunity to build something extremely valuable and bring together uh, a lot of these, these different uh, disciplines and provide a lot of value. We feel like we've, we've achieved really good product market fit already, just in the strength and conditioning section. Um, our target customers are strength and conditioning coaches at universities, high schools, professional clubs, and, and, and minor league teams. Our underserved needs are the coaches just spending way too much time in Excel and not getting the level of individualization that they would like. And our, our product really helps them achieve uh, those goals and, and do so very efficiently. Our business model is, is pretty standard software as a service. We have a tier for high schools that's you know, very discounted. Yeah, you know, there's about 30,000 high schools in the nation. Uh, you know, in the U.S. alone, and um, you know, we, we plan to offer it at a discounted price to to those institutions. Our primary tier will be, uh, you know, our, our pro tier, which is targeted at universities, um, and then our elite tier was is, will basically just include integrations with uh, other software vendors and white club uh, customer service, dedicated account rep, kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> So pricing is a little bit tricky. The, the conundrum is that we face is that the institutions that have the greatest need for our software are often the ones that can pay the least. Um, you have a, a UVU, a Utah State. They have smaller coaching staffs, but they still have large sporting programs with lots of athletes. Um, you know, but the, the coaching staff is limited in their budget, but they have bigger responsibility. Whereas, you know, University of Utah, BYU, their, their coaches, they have, you know, bigger budgets. They have five strength coaches just for the football team and, you know, a lot more resources to work with. So it's an interesting conundrum that we're still trying to figure out. Um, we just, we, at this point, we just anticipate that there's going to be, it's going to be a case by case basis of, um, you know, how we approach pricing uh, with a lot of these institutions. So um, that's fit, and uh, I'm going to open it up to uh, any questions you guys have or feedback. If the poorest users are the ones that most need it, why don't you just give it away for free? Google did that for several years, and look where they are now. <laughs> um, I mean, that's that's an option. You know, we we would seriously consider giving it away to high schools for free. There's there's a very real uh, revenue model of of being able to sell, you know, data on recruits to you know universities. So that, that's a very real possibility that we would consider. Everybody knows the different revenue models. Giving it away for free is saying, we are going to lead in this space no matter what. The money will come. We're doing this because we love you, not because we're trying to make money. Yep, makes sense. I'll, I'll uh, push it to the next level so you don't have to 
We're about giving it away. Why not have somebody else give it away for you? Um, so you're saying have like uh, a re- you know, I mean, reality, I mean, sponsors are going to be the key issue uh, and having because I, I, I'm in that field. We deal with, with high schools, middle schools, colleges, everything. And and to have a sponsor for a product, you know, they you know, school doesn't care where the money goes because it'll take you even in college it's going to take you a year to get them approval for 500 bucks. I mean, it just, that's just what they do. Got to cut a check. Got to get approval. Got this person. This is, this is a major expense. This is a $5,000 over the year. So it just slows you down. But to say here, by the way, this is an object that, that we feel you need. We're giving it to you. So we have somebody who covers this cost for the first couple of years. So they're, they're indentured to it. Mm. Okay. And so they, they can never leave it. And then as you add value to it, you can charge them money for it. You know, by the way, we have this additional value. If you want. Oh, yeah. I want that added to this, added to this, and you make more money. But having something else cover the cost, for, I mean, gee, LSU has what? Uh, only has a budget of $128 million for their football team. <laughs> BYU has a $20 million deficit for their team. And they're, you know, they're trying to raise that money. You know, they, they have plenty of money, but they're not going to spend it. It just takes too long. I didn't see that addressed in your business model. It, how long it takes to get approval for anything in a school district. And that's a really low, you know, it's six, six forever. But if you gave it to a school because somebody's paying for it, you know, and it puts it in the school where there's value, then that, I, it might be a thing that an option to look at. Okay. So I'm, uh, by training an economist, your marginal cost is zero. You need to marry yourself with a real world product that has a real world marginal cost. And one way to do it is what Jim suggests. So if you have a bundle that includes your free software and you're giving them also something that costs actual money, that's what a successful company looks like going forward from 2020. All software, I I don't know if that's ever going to make it because it eventually is going to come down to zero marginal cost. So you're saying we... uh maybe we partner with some of these device companies and, you know, be offered as a service along with these devices that they sell. And we collect the data from the devices and help them make, you know, build protocols based on the data they collect. Well, it could be a sponsor model, just like Jim said, but you've got to marry software these days with a real world product. Otherwise your market's going to run out on you because, you know, some guy's going to scrape your software and he's going to give it away for free if you don't. I, I think there's, I mean, it's, I love the idea. It's, it's great for coaches to have a smaller, easier, quicker program. I think you have to consider, um, you know, you didn't mention private schools, you know, they're, they're still like, they're, they're more apt to spend the money up front. There's plenty of those. Um, but I can see uh, it, there is a margin there to say, Combined with somebody else, I think sponsors is the number one way I'd look for that first. There's plenty of those who want to get into schools and cost lots of money to get into school. Um, so puts it on the field with the players. That's a nice sponsorship. You know, it's, it's there. The strength coach sees it every day. And so that's it's a nice sale. Um, I look at, you know, what we sell to schools. You know, it's a smart school system. We could easily drop this into ours. Like we're, we're pitching right now the entire state of Texas school district. So that would just be an added value for us. And we'd want to discount the $99 to like 50 and uh, throw it in our whole bundle and say, here's what we offer the school. You know, we have you know, Zoom meetings. We have all this other stuff and smart stuff and ID stuff and you know, facial recognition stuff. So, I mean, there's, 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 we're just one of 50 or 60 out there doing stuff for schools. You might look at that to add value to a school already has a contract and put you in. They just raise their prices a little and add more value to a school. Uh, it just might be something to consider. I mean, instead of standing alone and struggling, you might find somebody who's already dominant in the marketplace, doing well, and then say, we'd like to add value to you. Here's our product, and this is what we want for every sale. And then you're getting, you know, then you, you, then you can grow pretty fast. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're definitely, we're in discussions sort of with uh, a few potential players like that. Um, you know, at least on the integration side, um, figuring out how we can build, tap into their API. So that, that would be an easy, an easy uh, transition to have that conversation. 
Todd, we have a couple people online. Amy says, great job finding how you fit into what's already being done and how to add value to the currently or identified areas. And then Darren says, you already have beta users. Have you asked them to purchase and what have been the indications they will become buying customers? So we have asked them to purchase and they said they would like to, but COVID-19 has really put a, <laughs> A damper on sporting you know sports budgets so um that's been that's been tough it's been hard for us to to convince people to approach their administration in this time of just contraction and say hey we need money for this they they do they do they want it they do feel like it's worth paying for yeah athletic departments are hurting right now um tickets right yeah nobody's buying tickets uh, so you, you've got this channel with strength and conditioning coaches, athletic departments. Have you looked at like personal trainers and gyms and those types of that type of market? Yes. Um, that's initially kind of where, uh, I started out, you know, trying to, to feel out the personal trainers, the private gyms. And what I found is that their concerns are more business related. They're like, how can I build my customers? How can I stay in contact with them? How can I, you know, retain, you know, their, their business. Um, and our product is and our vision is much more the application of strength, you know, of, of sports science. And a lot of the profession, you know, a lot of the, your average personal trainer, your average private gym, they just, they don't have the sophistication. They don't have the credentials um, to really, do what our you know to really utilize what our software can do so we have another question from online it's what's your greatest need and roadblocks to get to the next phase right now we just need to sell like we have a product people like it um we just need to figure out how to sell it so that's that's our biggest focus right now is is trying to get revenue in the door because we we have we know we we add value we know we have something worth paying for so it's just getting the, the getting so the right here, here's another question people who have money are going to be medical groups you know chiropractors physical therapists occupational therapists they've got money uh, hospitals got lots of money do you have a tier for a hospital or for those groups that says as a professional i mean there's a lot of places that do strength you know they have the after the athletes hurt they come through a, a training program yeah the coaches have this, it's great, but to have a carry on to say a, a center for athletes has this, you might get some quick sales with just selling to those groups. You know, we, we haven't uh, explored that too much. We've, we've, we've had like a couple people approach us and we're trying to get some conversations started uh, in that field. Um, it's, it's kind of to be determined how, how that will play out. Um, you know, certainly the the medical profession has as more scientifically based approach uh, here's a, here's a here's a play i would look at if you went to them and said to guarantee your spot as it really taking care of the athletes at the local high school or college where they're closest to here is software you buy from us you give to the school school is tied to us for bringing these people back and forth in School loves you because they have a free pro high school. gets a free program. College gets a discount. The doc pays it because he doesn't care because he's making tons of money when an athlete comes in. And so he, he, he become, becomes a sponsor in, so you're talking a regional type situation. So you just pick where's this group of, of doctors, um, you know, physical therapists, et cetera, their sports centers, where are they located next to what schools they pay for the bill. It, it's free to school. School uses it. And so the, the coach, where's he want to send him? He's got the documents here. He wants to send it where he's tied to. So he's going to make sure it goes right back to that relationship where they make lots of money when somebody has an injury. Okay, yeah. So if I can add on what Jim said with a little testimony of my son, who was a high school football player. He was an all-state player in Texas. He gave out everything he had every Friday night. He'd make 20, 25 tackles a game as a middle linebacker. But every Saturday he had to go to the orthopedic surgeon the orthopedic surgeon had a free clinic for high school football players. He had them lined up, you know, 20, 30 deep every Saturday morning. 
So that's the kind of thing I think Jim is suggesting to build those kind of relationships. Successful businesses these days are built on relationships, not on selling anything. I have a con some feedback on your uh, presentation. Do you want to hear it? I'm, I'm totally open to it. <laughs> okay. So that slide right there, I don't know the name of your company. It's not on there. I tried to look it up, but you started with a slide that also didn't have your name of the company on it. So I assume because my friend next to me here told me he th thought it was FYTT. He said, oh, okay. So they changed to a weird name so they could get a .com. So I looked up FYTT.com and you're not there. So then I had to do a generic search for FYTT and I came up with five or six different things that might have been you, but I clicked on one and ended up your FYTT.io. So you have given me no way to learn more about your company while I'm sitting here in the room with you because your pace and anybody's pace of presentation is going to be slower than what they can read online as they go. So if you really want to get serious about what you're doing, you got to think about your time in front of people that are, you know, serious possible investors that they, their time is really valuable. You've got to make sure you're giving them all the resources they need. Makes sense. Okay, we have another question online. Can you overcome the COVID objections by repositioning your product to be a solution for those affected by COVID? Your product can be used to reduce costs by allowing fewer coaches to serve more athletes or to allow athletes to use the product to track and improve their workouts when they cannot work out as a team. Yeah, to some extent, um, like we, we add a ton of value to in the COVID in the COVID era, you know, we, we enable remote training um, and make it seamless to train at, at home in quarantine or in the gym. Um, that still hasn't totally got us over the hump, at least at least with the, the folks we've been talking to uh, thus far. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just kind of tough, you know, maybe, maybe I'm not the best salesman or whatever. <laughs> um, but uh but yeah, we haven't had a ton of success there. Maybe that's your key problem right there is you don't have a good salesman. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I mean, I mean I, you're great. You did. You have a great model here. It looks really good. Probably works fantastically. But that's a skill set that you don't have. So why would you want to do that? I mean, you wouldn't tell an athlete, gee, I want you to just to focus on math, not not sports. Mm -hmm. Um because you're bad at math. And so we're going to take you out of the sports program. We're going to put you in a bunch of math classes and that'll improve your game. No, it doesn't happen <laughs> that way. You should know that you're, you're in sports. So take a look at your skill sets and say, I am not a salesman. Where am I lacking in sales? I better bring somebody on board, sacrifice them to say, I got to have sales, bring out a powerful sales tool. Uh, I do agree about COVID. That is a phenomenal. It's going to be here for at least another year and a half. Um, all the models are no matter what happens, people are still going to, it's going to have some shelf life. If we look at pitches is a cure for COVID in essence, it's going to cure the coach's relationship and keep people trained. Mm -hmm. And then, and, and recommend they use COVID money, use, say you're going to have an stimulus package, use that to purchase this for COVID, you know, just piggyback on the, on the panic. Yeah. Yeah. Now my, my next focus for the foreseeable future is to, is to fill the, the sales hole in, in the org. Um, so I, I, I really want to find somebody who's, who can, and can help me there for sure. So, so first, a quick question for my friends here at Rev Road. Does the nerdy guy still do the Thursday afternoon free thing about checking out your company? What, what's his name? What's the name of it? Seth. Okay, Seth teaches a great class where you pre-qualify your business before you ever spend the money that you've already spent on this. Learn how to sell first. Learn how to make relationships first. Once you have the knowledge of relationship and sales that way, it doesn't matter what you put up on that screen. It's going to work because everything is based on relationship. And you can do that for free. That's good to know. Cool. Well, thank you, Todd, for, and thank you, everybody, for your participation. Um, the last question we have, and I, to a point you've already answered it, but what can the Rev Road community do for you? <laughs> Sorry. What can the One Million Cups community do for you? Um, just uh, if you know anybody who loves uh, sports and is really good at sales, I'd love to meet them. <laughs> you know, we, we need sales, so that's, that's where I'm, I'm focused right now.